It's Ollie from History Profiles. In this video, I will be taking you to 5th century China, where the nomadic hordes of the Ruran were ever watchful, looking to take the lands of the Northern Wei Dynasty. The Son of Heaven, or the Emperor, would call on the weak and the strong to war, to battle with the nomadic hordes. This was a time for bravery, honour, and warriors. A young ordinary woman named Mulan would take her feeble father's old war armour as her own, and would take his place in the army of the Son of Heaven. This is her story. As the nomadic hordes of the Ruran continued to press south, and pressure the Emperor and his lands, he was forced to conscript many into his service. However, it is important to highlight the origins of the Northern Wei Dynasty, as Mulan was serving under them. They were similar to the nomads, as their ancestors were the Xianbei, a proto-Mongolic ancient nomadic people that once resided in Mongolia and what is today northeastern China. They would come to rule northern China, and even though they adopted some traditional Chinese customs, they never forgot who they were. So Mulan would have been raised riding horses, and would have also trained in the martial arts. She would have had more independence than your traditional Chinese woman, due to the culture of her ancestors. The Emperor of Northern Wei, or the Son of Heaven, had this to say about his people, compared to those of other lands. The Chinese are foot soldiers. We are horsemen. What can a herd of colts and sheep do against tigers or a pack of wolves? As for the Ruran, they graze in the north during the summer. In the autumn, they come south, and in the winter, they raid our frontiers. We have only to attack them in the summer, in their pasture lands. At that time, their horses are useless. The stallions are busy with the fillies, and the mares with their foals. If we but come upon them, and cut them off from their grazing water, within a few days they will either be taken, or destroyed. The Emperor still embraced his ancestry, and that of his people, for that is what made them tigers in his eyes. Nevertheless, he still needed numbers to fight, as perhaps in the back of his mind, he knew the Ruran could be a ruthless foe. They continued to raid the Emperor's land, where they would loot and pillage towns, and kill all in their path. In the eyes of the Son of Heaven, the Ruran were no more than barbarians, and he wanted to wipe them out once and for all. A military expedition would be launched in the year 429 against the Ruran. Here is where Mulan's story begins. I will now read Mulan's famous ballad. Mulan sighs at her loom. The Son of Heaven is mobilising the military, and her father is named in each of the conscription notices from the Emperor. Her father is old, and her younger brother is just a child, so she decides to take her father's place. She buys a fine horse from the Eastern Market, saddle and stirrup from the Western Market, bridles and reins from the Southern Market, and a long whip from the Northern Market. She bids farewell to her parents in the morning, and leaves for the Black Mountain, encamping by the Yellow River in the evening where she cannot hear the calls of her parents due to the rushing waters, only the sounds of the barbarians cavalry in the Yan Mountains. She advances 10,000 li to battle as if flying past the mountains. The sound of the sentry gong cuts through the cold night air, and the moonlight reflects off her metal armour. A hundred battles take place, and generals die. After the ten year campaign, the stout veterans return to meet the Son of Heaven, enthroned in the splendid palace, which confers promotion in rank, and prizes of hundreds of thousands. He asks Mulan what she would like. Mulan turns down the high-ranking position of Shangshulang in the central government, and asks only for a speedy steed to take her home. Her parents, upon hearing her return, welcome her home outside their hometown. Her elder sister puts on her fine dress, her younger brother sharpens the knife for the swine and sheep. Mulan returns to her room, 
changes from her tabard into her old clothes. She combs her hair by the window, and before the mirror, fastens gold yellow flowers. Her comrades are shocked to see her. For 12 years of their enlistment together, they did not realize she was a woman. In response, Mulan offers a metaphor. The male hair has front heavy paws. The female hair tends to squint. But when they are running side by side, close to the ground, who can tell me which is male or female? From Mulan's story, we can tell she was brave, impulsive, and of course must have been a great warrior to survive all those battles with the nomadic Ruran. She took her father's place in battle, knowing that he going to war would mean certain death, as he would have been too old to fight with the younger, fiercer warriors. We also see how humble she is, and how she cares deeply for her family. For the Son of Heaven offered her a high-ranking position in the central government, which no doubt would have meant she would have acquired riches and respect. However, her only desire was to go back to her family and her ordinary life. This is reflected on how she put on her old clothes, putting aside her life as a warrior, and once again, embracing life with her family. In regards to Mulan's fighting ability, it is said that she was the veteran of a hundred battles and survived them all. Therefore, she must have been an amazing warrior, being able to ride a horse with ease, being the master of the bow, sword and spear. Now, this isn't completely out of the ordinary, as the women of the lands of the Northern Wei Dynasty embraced their ancestry as nomadic people, and some of them would have trained to fire arrows from moving horses, trained with the sword and spear. So this calls into question that Mulan must have learned the art of the sword, was literary and educated, as she was offered a high-ranking position after the war. This reflects the gender roles and the status of women in nomadic societies. According to the Book of Wei, a classic Chinese historical text compiled by Wei Shu from 551 to 554, which describes the history of Northern Wei and Eastern Wei from 386 to 550, Emperor Taiwu of Northern Wei launched a military expedition in the year 429 against the hordes of the Ruran by marching on the Black Mountain and further north to the Yanran Mountain. Both of these locations are mentioned in Mulan's ballad. The Black Mountain corresponds with the Shahu Mountain, which resides in Inner Mongolia. Could this be the same campaign that Mulan went on? Historians and scholars both argue if Mulan was a real person or a legend, but most, if not all stories and songs, derive from something real, even if it has changed over time. The story of Mulan has inspired many films and plays, and if she was real, these films have immortalized her, making her one of the most well-known heroines around the world. The Ballad of Mulan is one of bravery, honor, and the importance of one's family. With everything presented, do you think Mulan was a real person that put on her father's old war armor, pretended to be a man, and fought in a 10-year military campaign, and survived it all? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. I hope you enjoyed the video everyone, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.